And now, please welcome Executive Director of Destination Canada, Chantal Sturk Nadeau, and Senior Director of Business Development Economic Sectors at Destination Canada, Virginie Devisher, for a conversation moderated by Skiftex editorial strategist Darren Free. Hello, everyone. Welcome to today's session on tapping into local innovation to drive business events and resilient communities, presented by our partners from Destination Canada. Today, we're going to talk about how providing access to local sector knowledge and expertise is the best value proposition to drive the future of business events and long-term economic growth. It's not about the event venue, it's about the people, the connections, and the access to knowledge that you can't find anywhere else. DMOs around the world are driving interest based on access to human expertise and next generation facilities. For today's session, we're taking a closer look at the people, the experts and innovators who bring this strategy to life. And here to discuss this crucial role that local experts play, um, how the strategy is shifting and what Canada is doing differently are Chantelle Sturk Nadeau, Executive Director, Destination Canada Business Events, and Virginie Dev Devisher, Senior Director of Business Development, Economic Sectors at Destination Canada. Welcome. Thank you. So uh, my first question is for Chantal. Uh, Chantal, for those who have not participated in this session previously, can you give us a brief overview of what sector knowledge means to Destination Canada Business Events? Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, when we talk about sector knowledge, really what we're talking about is attracting global business events from within the sectors in which Canada leads and which ones are aligned with our values. Um, what I mean by that is very much something where we're aligned with promoting health and life sciences, climate change, things like technology for good, low ocean economies, sustainability and community strength and resilience. So when we're going after a sector strategy and sector knowledge for us, it really is promoting Canada's strengths in those five sectors. So being life sciences, technology, advanced manufacturing, agribusiness, natural resources, and we're going after all the international associations and corporate business that are tied to those sectors. And um, my next question is for Virginie. Uh, Chantal mentioned you know, that, that Destination Canada is promoting Canadian strengths. In a country as big as Canada, um, how do you go about doing that exactly? That's a great question, uh, Darren. It's all about the people. So our business development team, for example, takes a different approach. They have a background in business attraction and economic development. And because they come from economic development, they work not only with destination partners, but they work with the economic development agency partners. They work to identify influencers, sector champions, and those could be researchers working at the university. They could be small and medium enterprises or large corporate multinationals, and even local members of these professional associations. They learn about the latest innovations in our priority sectors. The team builds relationships with those C-suite executives within those primary sectors around the globe. And they also work with, for example, Canada's global affairs in market representatives and those international associations. And the interesting thing is our conversations rarely start with tourism. We rather look at the visitor economy and we seek to understand how we can help increase their revenue, grow their business, how we can add to their unique value proposition or their membership, how we can share best practices, etc. Um, Chantal, uh, how does Destination Canada business events help communities now? Um, you know, how do you help shape Canada's future? You know, I, I think, uh, you know, now is a critical time to really look at um, internally, what is everyone's role and what is in the role to today that's going to be really impacting the future? And when I think about today, our role really is that of an, a change agent and innovators in our own right. What we want to do is not duplicate what our DMO partners and our industry segment in Canada is actually doing. Rather, how do we establish a national framework for business development by not duplicating where we can help support our partners by doing something different that's going to bring business back to them? So what really what we're doing is we've changed focus to conduct uh, extensive research on the state of each sector uh, globally around uh, the country. Um, as well as um, in, uh, sorry, globally, as well as within our own country. And we're analyzing that current trends within those five sectors that I had identified to then identify opportunities for event attraction. 
we created a very detailed, um, you know, really detailed understanding of business intel to share with our partners so that when they are coming out of this recovery and resilience phases, what type of research can we actually provide that I'm going to help them make informed decisions around their own individual sales and marketing strategies moving forward? So as far as shaping Canada's future, we know the legacy impacts of business events is talent attraction, increased trade and investment, R&D partnerships and future leisure travelers. We continue to talk about how we are the catalyst for that leisure traveler. And when our strategy to attract business events then is also impacting immigration. We need only to really look around at our technical tours and site visits that we've done personally, Vision and I and our team across Canada to really realize how many different accents that we're hearing as we tour these innovation centers in our own country. The intellectual capital it takes to create new therapies, new tools and technologies. It's not only that it's made in Canada, but it's innovators that are choosing to come to Canada from across the world. You know, for many years, Canada suffered the, the brain drain, I would say, where our leading scientists, doctors, engineers found rewarding employment in the U.S. and around the globe. Um, we are now seeing over the last couple of years that we're, we really are helping to reverse the flow of brain drain. And we are now attracting talent to stay and move to Canada for more meaningful employment in our thriving sect sectors. But to adopt our country's val values, they really enjoy the quality of life. And that's tied to what it is that we're trying to do by growing Canada's economy in all different ways. And that means people as well. Let's, let's talk for a minute about those experts that you mentioned, um, you know, stopping the brain drain, attracting talent, keeping people in Canada. Um, I'd like to just talk about what role those local experts play um, within each sector. Uh, Virginia, can you talk, talk about that? Yes, they play such a massive role from sector leadership, thought leadership, innovation leadership, they're really that difference that tips the scale in favor of one destination over another. So when we work together with that industry, these experts, these thought leaders from academia or business, we create that true meaning of the minds that generates the conversations, the connections and the collaborations. But to explain it better than just myself, let's turn it directly towards those leaders. So action. Canada is driving the future of business events and economic growth through unprecedented cooperation between industry-leading experts and cutting-edge institutions. Let's meet some of the innovators behind Canada's thriving sectors. I'm uh, Jean-Francois Lalonde. I'm an associate professor of electrical and computer engineering at Université Laval in Quebec City. I do research uh, mostly in computer vision. Computer vision is, uh, is a field of artificial intelligence in which we're trying to recreate the, uh, the capacity that humans have in understanding the world through our eyes and, and sort of give that capacity to computers. Not only do we have a, a beautiful backdrop of a 400 year old uh, you know, historical town right next door, but uh, what sets us apart is really a whole ecosystem that is alive and well in the city. Not only computer vision and 3D, but also optics, photonics, all the way down to artificial intelligence, uh, which has received a lot of attention lately. Well, Saskatoon is appealing from uh, many perspectives, not just because it is uh, on the riverbanks and it's gorgeous. From a life sciences point of view, I think our selling point really is the university's devotion uh, to one health. Take the current situation as an example. So we've got an international pandemic. The One Health uh, approach is that you need people from different disciplines to be able to, to solve this. Scientists and virologists like me, and we can figure out how the virus works. But that's a very small part of the issue. For instance, politics plays a huge role. But you need people who are psychologists trying to understand why people do the things they do. Computer uh, scientists who know how to model things. So if there was a conference organized in Saskatoon, um, I would hope that people would take a more holistic look at the problem to try to figure out how to solve it. We've spent 500 plus years trying to make a life on the sea. It's a rough place to be. Because of that, um, a lot of our companies have become world renowned in harsh environment technologies. The Marine Institute is in St. John's. The National Research Council has a research facility there and the number of private industry have uh, sprung up over the last number of years. It was mostly our job to bring the community together because we found that industry is off doing their thing, research is off doing their thing, 
seldom did the two meet. Uh, it really is a concerted effort on everybody's part and all it takes really is a, uh, is a phone call to get people uh, you know, behind you and, and supporting you. Great. Um, so great to see uh, see these experts at work. Um, I had a question about one of the uh, the experts, Jean Francois of uh, Virginia. He shared how the field of three D computer vision has become a thriving ecosystem within Quebec City. And I was just wondering if you could give us a few examples of other he uh, healthy sector ecosystems within Canada. Of course, I mean technology is certainly thriving across Canada. You know, the leadership that we have, whether it's artificial intelligence, it's AR, VR, it's data analytics, it then translates into fields like healthcare, autonomous vehicles, gaming, education, and much more. And it's that leadership that's helped to attract events such as the Collision Conference, for example, in Toronto, or the World Summit AI North America to Montreal. And besides technology, I mean, life sciences is another example. So Canadian research in infectious diseases and vaccine development is even more important now than ever. I mean, given the current pandemic, but we have teams and researchers that are in Saskatoon, like you just saw in the video from to Winnipeg to Quebec City and elsewhere that are responding to the pandemic. So more than vaccine research, that life science industry is really looking at what those global trends from wearable tech to health monitoring, telemedicine, et cetera. And Dr. Misra explained how he attracted, you know, the One Health Conference in Saskatoon. But there's many others, such as International Society of Biomechanics to Calgary or the International Society for Stem Cell Research to Toronto. And I'd be remiss if I didn't mention, you know, the blue ocean economy within our natural resources sector is also thriving in centers of excellence in eastern and western Canada around our coasts. I and mean, ocean tech businesses in Victoria, B.C. or St. John's, Newfoundland in Labrador are developing things like autonomous underwater vehicles, observation systems to measure, model, predict ocean conditions, mitigate disasters. It's fascinating. Uh, and one, for example, is this sort of technology that we'll be able to spotlight in a future Innovate Canada. It's an annual event that we host to showcase Canadian ingenuity. Um, Chantal, I have a question about, um, I know that Canada is not the only country that's that's working with this economic sector strategy. Um, but the scale and the scope of Canada's strategy really makes Canada a real a pioneer in this space. And apart, you know, as more countries adopt the approach, how is Canada's strategy standing apart from the rest? Yeah, um, you know, when when I we, we see colleagues around the, the globe, whether they're, they're states, provinces, cities, um, the sector strategy isn't something new, as you mentioned. But I think part of it is looking at the sheer size of Canada, which is one component that I always like to, to uh, really provide back out to say, we are a large country. We are unified by values and our economy uh, is different all across the board. But when one thing really, when we're looking at the scale of our strategy that only makes sense to Canada and how we act from all the rest is really that we walk the talk. Our strategy has evolved over time. We've added necessary resources to expand our business development team. We've done a massive shift from in-market traditional salespeople to uh, in Canada in-market uh, experts from the sector and having experience of the, as we talked about, the economic sector side of things. We're building relationships now with those that we can leverage in markets like trade commissioners and organizations across the globe from that sector and economic side of things and finance. We we're also supporting our activities with more innovative marketing in terms of just saying come to Canada because of this. It really almost seems succinct where we're developing um, marketing uh, components, content that are really highlighting our country's um, sectors and our innovators and the people and why that makes it important to be bringing a media convention to bring that back being catalyst to future development and trade of their own organization. So really through our approach that we've actually been having lately, it's, it's to event attraction. We are economically aligned with those five key sectors, but we've identified 21 countries around the globe that are aligned with our five sectors. We've done that research. We know where those cluster sectors are that are, are really identifying the associations and the corporations around the world that match us. 
we're targeting, being very focused. We call it the focused yet global approach on how we are attracting business events in the same manner that trade and investment attraction occurs. And, and how are you pivoting um, to talk, you know, in, in this age of COVID-19 as the industry has transformed, how are you pivoting that model? Well, I think it, I mean, it's been very difficult for, I would say everyone, but, um, and especially our industry partners from the tourism side in terms of venues and DMCs. But I think COVID in, in effect has really provided us with all a unique opportunity to pause and rethink the direction of our industry and our roles within it. And what it has done for us is it really has accelerated our strategy to, we are already doing this, but it has enabled us to um, speed up what it is that we're doing. So it's actually done, a lot of good for this in our end. Um, until now, our mandate has always been to attract international events to Canada, but it seemed it was almost the, a larger view. It had a geography standpoint. It was um, very much geared towards in markets and a more traditional aspect. But as we begin to emerge from this pandemic, our priorities are shifting to spur demand for domestic events first and to work with industry to innovate the Canadian offering um, we understand that we will lay out the challenge and the support that the Canadian industry needs and is responding to at this time. Great, thank you. Um, if, finally, as we wrap up, I would just like, uh, if you could just give one lesson for today's attendees, uh, one takeaway, what would that be, Virginia? For start, and now, just like Chantal said, it's really the time to pivot. You know, seek out that blue ocean space where no one else is fishing. Don't wait for a return to normal. This is our new normal. So if we're going to go from surviving COVID to thriving in the COVID era, it's going to take some resolve, imagination, innovation, and a bold plan to reimagine the industry. Yeah, and, and, and I think that, you know, that is that the inspiration side of things. And I think organizations really need to understand now what their customers will value in the future. So that makes that foresight in terms of really looking at um, tailoring different types of experiences based on those insights to think what will be the need in the future? Who's going to be thriving? What are the clients even that I should be approaching in what sectors? Um, it's, it's really taking that um, to begin the planning on how you're gonna win your customers back, but also how you're gonna build new customers when the time is right. And creating new and reimagining existing is not easy for everyone, especially when we've got a new renewed focus on health and safety, but really now is the time to re-examine your processes and, and really simplify, streamline, and create a more sustainable client-centric operational practice that will allow all of us to swiftly um, continue to be nimble and flexible when opportunities arise. And I think that is, it's not creating what the new normal is going to be. It's actually the new normal is having that evolution and that nimble flexibility that we're going in change. Change is always happening. And it's following where our clients um, gaps or what we can do to help solve their problems at the same time as growing our own economy. And that's the win-win. Great, great. It's a great place to leave it. Um, thank you both so much for joining us today. And for all attendees, please check out their exhibitor space to learn more about Destination Canada business events. Chantal, Virginie, thank you very much. Merci beaucoup. Au revoir.